What's up everybody? Welcome to a tutorial here on the AREX YouTube channel. Um, my name is Coastfly and I've been given the honors of uh, guiding you guys through this uh, tutorial here today. Um, the fly I will be tying is inspired by one of the flies by uh, Gunnar Brammer. Um, this one is called the Grumpy Grizzly and it is uh, basically just a streamer with a modeler head. Um, in colors uh, fitted to the bait fish where I live. Uh, but of course you can tie this in all sorts of colors uh, so it will fit the bait fish where you live. Um, I will be tying on the new SA210 um, saltwater hook. It is a signature hook. It is the Bob Clauser saltwater streamer hook, um, which is really, really cool um, because this hook was developed in uh, cooperation with Bob himself. So um, really, really nice new hook here from uh, the boys at Arix. Let me just start by getting some thread on the hook here. Cover the shank so your materials won't be sliding off when you uh, tie them in. Trim this off. So get your thread to just about the hook tip there. Then I need two feathers for the tail. I will be using these grizzly feathers. All feathers I use on this fly are actually from the same neck, so that's nice. You don't have to use too much stuff for one fly. Flip this a little bit. One way I like to do this is just to get a few loose wraps in and then just pull that feather back in under the wraps before I tighten it down and that way I can kind of control um, control the position of the, of the feathers. You can see here these are flat on the sides. stems. Then I want to cover a few millimeters here in the back with some dubbing. In this case it is the semi seal from Spawn. So just cover up this back here. Tighten in the feathers. Then I have blocked off uh, some of the marabou also on the same neck. Tie this in so it's roughly, I don't know, it's just sticking out past the hook bend there. Get some secure wraps on here just on top of the hook to get some height on it. Like so. Maybe you can push it a little bit with your, with your thumb there. Advance your thread to up around this point here. Get some more dubbing. Thick layer, so I have something. Whoop, so I have something to brush out afterwards. Just like so. Oh, still looking pretty good to me. And again, I have some marabou from the same. Same neck there. Tie 
that in on top of the hook as well. Tiny bit shorter than the previous bunch. Push that out with your thumb a little bit. Up a little bit. And here you can see it. Some height on it. Uh, we're slowly building up that, that taper of the fly. Then I have another grizzly feather here. Stem there. Let's get some hackle pliers on that. Get it under control. Touching turns. Stroking the fibers back. Like so you don't know, you don't want that many turns in here. Uh, something like four or five. Should do the job. Make sure that you catch that. A few turns. There we go. And this time I'm cutting it off. Like so. Clean this up. Then I have already prepared some um, gear hair in my stagger here. You can see them here. Let's get those out. And around the hook here. Careful with this. Few loose wraps on top of that, and then just kind of wiggle it around as you're pulling. So you want this to be all the way around the hook, and then just move your way through this entire jungle. And this looks crazy at this point, okay? But don't be alarmed. It's supposed to look like this. So for every turn, you go through this deer hair here, make sure there's enough room up in front, okay. Pull it. push it a little bit backwards like that, get your thread up in front of that, hold it back like this. And uh, this might, uh, you might need a few tries to get this correct in the beginning. So just give it a few tries and uh, pretty sure you'll manage. I'm no expert uh, by any means when it comes to um, deer hair heads for that matter like so and then kind of just fluff everything out a little bit here now it helps if you have a pair of scissors that are um, curved like these uh, but if you don't um, just trim this in small steps but the curved ones here will actually help me determine the head here. So just get that scissor in there. Kind of just snip away carefully. And the fly should start to look better for every single 
cut you make here. Just make sure that you don't overdo it. And you'll be fine. Might even need to hold the fibers a little bit like I'm doing with my fingers here because they are slippery. work with it all the way around like so Try to do this as fast as I can here just for the sake of this video. You can of course um, just take your time with this to really make that head nice and round. And at some point you will reach um, you will reach a point where you might be thinking should I stop now or just trim a little bit more? And usually that's your cue to stop trimming. I'm sorry, to stop trimming. Uh, because <laughs> you might be left with, uh, with something looking a bit too underdressed. I'm sure we've all been there. Where we're thinking, ah. It needs a little bit more and then you trim a little bit more and you trim a little bit more and then all of a sudden your fly is cut to pieces. You have to start all over. So for the sake of this video I will stop trimming this fly here. Um, but here you can see the finished fly pretty deadly looking. This fish is so well on a sinking line or an intermediate uh, because it hovers in the water so if you stop stripping it in it will just stay put in the water and not sink do anything it will just stay and hover there and that is something that the fish absolutely can't stand for so thank you for watching uh, this tutorial and thank you for having me as your host if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel of Eric's please uh, do that Leave the video with a thumbs up and uh, some comments down below and uh, I will see you guys in a video in the future and uh, thank you for watching for now. Bye!